Hey guys, this is Tank Goose. So I mentioned in my prior video that I'm setting up a 40 gallon uh, freshwater tank. Actually, my girlfriend's setting one up. And so I'm really excited to show you that setup video down the road. In the meantime, I needed a 40 gallon tank stand. So I decided to um, do a custom build. So this is the finished product. If you guys want to see how I put this together, please stay tuned. I'll show you how to build a 40 gallon acrylic tank stand. So here we go. Like I said, I'm going with all oak. Um, the prior stand I built, I used a pine two by four frame. This one, I'm going to try to go for a um, three quarter inch uh, oak interior frame. So I stain everything, kind of get a nice even finish throughout the interior. So ups the cost a little bit, but I kind of want to dabble with this and uh, see how it works. So uh, time to start with my cuts. So a lot of the cutting's done. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and built out the top and bottom frames uh, and the legs that I want to attach uh, the top and bottom together using pocket holes so I get a nice flush edge. Uh, going a little closer, you can see here's the top. This will be an acrylic tank, so I plan on putting a piece of plywood on top of here. Uh, those are just center supports. It should be more than enough to support the weight of the acrylic tank. Because uh, I'm also going to have um, the extra framing or paneling is actually part of the support as well. So you'll see how that fits in with this. So this is just the internal framework and I'm also going to have an additional support from the external paneling that will sit on top of everything. So uh, more to come on how I do that. I want to start working on these pocket holes on this oak wood, uh, see how that goes, and I'll be back. Okay, so now you can start seeing the legs being mounted to the base of the stand. So like I said, I'm using pocket holes. So I have this Krieg pocket hole jig system that works fantastic for the stuff like this. And if you guys are gonna do something like that at home, uh, there are a lot of probably more in-depth videos on it out there, but before you do your first one, make sure you do uh, a test depth. So this is just some scraps I had and I went ahead and you know, test out the depth, test out how lock tight this is. And these are really tight joints um, once they're secured. So I feel very comfortable that this frame is going to be uh, very secured um, with these pocket holes in here attaching the top and bottom. So there'll be that plus the exterior frame for the support. So you can kind of see how all this is starting to come together. So here's the frame all assembled. As you can see, uh, I've got the pocket holes going all the way to the edge, which will make it easy for attaching my paneling. Uh, everything is transferring down through these oak legs. Uh, that won't be the only support, so as I continue folding this out, you'll see what I mean. Uh, the side panels, I have now cut out on the table saw, so you'll see how I will glue and nail this plywood to the side and actually the, um, the top will sit on top of this and that will give it extra support going down through the side panels as well. So that's a little different than the other stand I build where all the support went down through here and the panels were just for decoration. And these I'm using the panels as additional support for this stand. So uh, be back in a bit I'll show you how everything's coming together. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, but the one side of the stand frame is in. As you can see, I just used uh, pocket holes to assemble that frame together, and then it is glued and clamped a nail gun to the front. Uh, that's all dry, so now I'm going on the other side. I haven't decided what side's going to be front or back yet because uh, I want to see how both sides come out. The first side came out really well, so that might be the front. We'll see if this side comes out even better. Uh, so you can see I have two pieces here that I'm using for the frame. Uh, the other two are over here. So as I mentioned, on pocket holes. So everything is clamped down. I just drilled those out for the pocket hole jig. I'm using that Krieg pocket hole jig and another jig my uh, brother gave me. Um, and one of the keys on this is making sure this is completely level. So I'm using a clamp to make sure these boards are completely level and even still, they won't be uh, perfectly flush because the wood is just kind of slight warp to it. Uh, you really can't tell, but once you 
on clamp it you'll start seeing it and what I'm doing is a uh, uh, kind of dry clamp method so I'm going to get uh, three of these pieces assembled together and then I'm actually going to clamp them down in here just to kind of hold them in for about a day and a half two days and let them kind of re-warp and reform a little bit before I put the final piece together. It worked really well for the front side and so I'll be back in a second to show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here is the panel assembled. As you can see, I got a nice clean finish on the one side, which will be the outside edge. And then the inside is all joined together with pocket holes, which once this is attached to the frame, uh, you won't be able to see. So um, it's the last look at the frame before I cover it up. So I just wanted to reiterate um, how the weight is distributing. So as you can see, the length and the width uh, are both um, transferring all the weight through these legs in the frame, which is great because I'm not putting pressure on any pocket hole or screw joints that I have throughout here. Now, that's one of the keys for me is I want to minimize how much weight the screws were having to hold up, even though I know they'd probably do just fine. Uh, I felt it would just be a little more sturdy this way and allow me to go all the way out to the edges and have a clean frame. Uh, the frame will also be part of the support, so I'll have this three and a half inch, three quarter, uh, three and a half inch and three quarter inch thick uh, frame on the inside, and then the outside will have uh, the plywood, three quarter inch, and this frame uh, will help add support as the top will actually go all the way out um, to these edges and cover this up. So this will be part of the support as well. So the key for me is once I have this put together, I'm going to need to sand everything down and get that top really flush and make sure everything's level before I put the, uh, the top piece on. So that's what we'll do now, but I figured I'd give you one last look at the frame before I cover it up and, uh, and uh, glue the whole thing together. So I left off with the one panel uh, that was attached and the second one that was clamping together and attaching. So here it is with both panels now secured to the frame. Uh, as you get really close, you can see I, I glued these in, used a brad nailer to finish them, and where possible, uh, I tucked these away where um, this trim will be when I finish it. Uh, where I do see those little imperfections, I have a little red oak filler that I'll go through and put there and sand down, and you won't be able to even know they're there. Um, on the top, I went ahead and put the top on, that's finished and on. And I also put on this one and a half inch um, trim at the top to kind of surround the base of the tank, uh, which will also hold a little styrofoam that I'll put in here. So why I like to put this in here is I like to put um, a sheet of styrofoam uh, down below the tank just for just to make sure that I have nice and even support, even though this, this top is very flat and looks great without any imperfections, you know, just to be on the safe side. I've, I've always done that. Um, so yeah, just me a little overcautious. So now that top is in, it's glued. As you can see, I have this just uh, baseboard trim that's the matching oak wood. Then we'll go through, I've actually gone and cut all the pieces. So I'm about to start uh, gluing and uh, using finishing nails to put those into place. Also put the shelf in, uh, gotta, gotta take that back out and do some uh, finishing sanding on. I had a few spare pieces of wood I was able to build a shelf off of. Yeah, it's coming together. Uh, should be together soon. I'm gonna start my my primary sand and then my finishing sand and then get ready for uh, the final stain. So back in a bit. All right, here is the finished product. Uh, I skipped ahead a few steps. I did not show the finishing and staining process. In my last video, I covered that a little bit, but I pretty much recommend doing a pre-stain conditioner coat of stain and then three coats of polyurethane. That's what I've done on both these stands. Uh, one exception on this one, I made a big mistake. I uh, had everything ready to go. Just was in a hurry um, in the morning and uh, had to go on and do some other things. So I came out here to stain it really fast and I forgot to put on a pre-stain conditioner. Luckily, this is oak, but as you can see, there's some parts on the paneling where it was a little blotchy. Um, pre-stain conditioner would have helped prevent that. So the stain looks good, not great. It definitely could have been better. Um, had this been something like pine, I would, would have really been in trouble. Probably have to stop and sand down a whole bunch and try to fix the mistake. Um, 
But that's how it goes. Just make sure you guys pay attention to your details, have your project plans. Um, and look at the stand, most importantly, it is perfectly level. Um, it's a little off, I think, because the garage door, uh, garage floor here is a little off, but every time I measure it, it's coming back perfectly level. I put these uh, rail and style cabinet doors that I used a, a router table uh, with my brother at his garage. He's got a great wood shop that uh, he luckily helped me finish this off on. Uh, so these rail and style doors that look great with some finishing hardware. On the inside, um, I have the side for the canister filter I'm going to use and a shelf for storage. It's a removable shelf, so I can easily take that out. And if I wanted to fit in a sump, uh, plenty of room through the back if I want to put a sump down there. But for this, I actually just want to go with a simple canister. Uh, but I think this would be great. Be able to put the supplies in, shut the doors, which is great because I have a dog who actually will eat the fish food we're learning. So I need cabinet doors on all my tanks. Um, top's got this nice lip finished off. I'll be able to put a piece of styrofoam down there and then have the acrylic tank sit right on top of that. It's nice and flush and level. Um, yeah, so overall happy with it. I'll give you a quick shot from behind. So still have plenty of room to maneuver if I want to put uh, some bigger equipment in through there at some point. But still, so that's the finished stand. I did probably go a little over budget. I um, did not quite have perfect measurements of exactly the cuts I'll need. I had the links I wanted, but you know, you go to Home Depot to buy boards and you always have variable links and you kind of do the math there in the store and made a huge mistake. I didn't realize it all kind of added up to me. Got home, started measuring things out, making my cuts and realized that I was just like two inches short on one board. Uh, so I had to go back buy some more. Uh, and this wood is not cheap, so definitely a little mistake on my part. Went a little higher than I expected on budget. Uh, I'll post the specs below so you guys can, um, you know, get a sense of what I built out. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I'll be happy to answer them. Like, subscribe. Uh, coming soon, the follow-up video where we set up the 40-gallon tank. So really excited. Thank you guys for watching, and hope you have a great week.